Hello students, in this video we'll prove the Dirichlet problem for Laplacian on the unit circle. So let's consider the xy plane. We're just going to consider the unit circle. The unit circle. And I want to solve the Laplace equation, Laplacian of u is equal to zero in the, unit, in the interior of the unit circle. And I want to prescribe a boundary condition. I want to like u on the circle itself. So I take a unit or restrict u, just the unit circle, which I'm going to write t for the unit circle. I want it to be a given function phi, which is, of course, just a function of e to the i theta, right? So some function, complex i function on the unit circle. So that's the problem I want to solve. So our problem is this. Our problem is Laplacian u is equal to zero on the set x squared plus y squared less than one. And then u is equal to this given function phi. And this is a function phi that's defined on the circle itself, on x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So phi is a function of cosine theta and sine theta. So that's the problem we want to solve. And our typical approach to this problem is going to be separating variables. So let's do that and see what we get. So that's our harmonic function. So of course, u is called a harmonic function. So what we're going to do is we're going to write u of r and theta. We're going to write this in polar coordinates as a function f of r times the function g of theta. Okay? We're going to separate variables. This is the method of separation of variables. Separation of variables. Okay, great. And of course, what's the Laplacian polar coordinates? We have a formula for the Laplacian polar coordinates is what? The Laplacian polar coordinates, Laplacian u and polar coordinates is going to be urr plus 1 over r ur plus 1 over r squared u theta theta. That's the Laplacian. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in these simplified functions. So what will this become for us? For us, this is going to become f double prime times g plus 1 over r f prime times g plus 1 over r squared f times g double prime. Okay? And that has to be equal to 0. And so, of course, one intermediate step I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply by r squared. So this is really saying that r squared f double prime g plus r f prime g plus f g is equal to negative f g double prime. And so we separate variables as we get. And so now that turns out that we're, if we just simplify this, what this is going to tell me is if we divide by g and divide by f, assuming that they're non-zero, uh, this allows me to conclude that r squared f double prime plus r f prime over f is equal to what? Is equal to negative g double prime, negative g double prime over g. And of course, here's the kicker behind separation of variables. The whole idea behind this methodology is that this over here is a function of what? This expression over here on the left-hand side is a function only of r. That's only r only, right? And over here, this is a function of theta only. So those have to be equal to some constant lambda. This is my separation constant, separation constant. And so now, I know that this function g has to be 2 pi periodic. So note that g must be 2 pi periodic. Okay. And so what does that tell me about lambda? That tells me that lambda is going to be greater, well, let's see, if lambda is greater than zero, so if lambda is greater than zero, what kind of solutions will we get? So we have three cases to consider. So let's assume that lambda is greater than zero. So if lambda is greater than zero, we can write lambda as m squared for a positive value m. And this would tell me well about g. This would say that if that was an m squared over here, then I could throw that negative over there that would say that g double prime over g is equal to negative m squared, and that tells me that g double prime plus m squared g is equal to zero. And this equation over here gives me periodic solutions, right? This gives me what? This gives me g of theta is equal to cm cosine of m theta plus what? Plus um, cm tilde sine of m theta and so if m over here is an integer, so if m is an integer, m and z, then this is going, this will be a 2 pi periodic function. Great. So in other words, this will also include the zero case because I just get constants in this case, and the constants are clearly periodic, right? What I'd rather do is I'd rather write this in complex exponential notation. I want to use complex exponentials. So I'm going to write this as dm e to the i m theta plus dm tilde e to the minus i m theta. Okay? So in other words, 
lambda has to be equal to m squared, where m is an integer. Okay, great. Now, what will happen if I solve the, um, the other equation, the f equation over here? So what's the solution of the f equation? Well, the solution of the f equation is going to be the following. So f must solve what? f must solve r squared f double prime of r plus r f prime of r plus m squared f with a minus m squared f, actually. So that's going to be a minus m squared f. Because the now I don't have any signs over here, so if m is positive, this is going to be a minus m squared f of r is equal to zero. This, of course, is a Cauchy-Euler equation, right? So these equations are Cauchy-Euler. We know how to solve Cauchy-Euler equations. This is actually a very special case of a Cauchy-Euler equation, so I'll link to another video of how we solve these things over here. But I'm going to let the students over here check that the solutions of this equation over here, it's easy to see that f of r is going to be, let's say, a m r to the power m plus, um, let's say, b m r to the negative m, right? So let's check that r to the m works, right? This is going to be an m times m minus 1. This is going to be an m, and this is going to be a minus m squared. So the m's are going to cancel out, and then the uh, m squared is going to cancel out. So that clearly works the same thing by symmetry with negative m, by the symmetry of the equation over here. But check out the, make sure that you can, to solve this equation, you need to make a logarithmic substitution, and then solve the co corresponding constant coefficient differential equation. And this is exactly what you're going to see you're going to get. The roots of the characteristic equation is going to be plus or minus m. Excellent. All right. Now, of course, I don't want uh, r to the negative m because r to the negative m is not defined, not defined at r equals zero, and r equals zero is interior to our domain. So that function is this is actually going to be an analytic function, but it's going to be a analytic function ever outside the origin. So I want to exclude that thing over here. So I'm going to have r to the m, but when m is negative over here, I'm going to take this solution over here, right? So when m is positive, we're going to choose this solution. When m is negative, we're going to choose this solution over here, right? So I have to symmetrize this based on the, the I want m, I want the exponent of r to be always greater than zero for this problem. Okay, excellent. And so the solution of this, f of r, is just going to be what? Just give me some constants, cm, r to the absolute value of m, if m is positive or negative, right? r to the absolute value of m. And so now I can put all this together and conclude what? So I can conclude that my solution, u of r and theta, is going to be the sum, m and z, of just what? Well, when I choose these coefficients over here, I'll choose r to the absolute value of m, so I'm just going to have this. I'm going to have some constants. Let's call those constants alpha m. And we have an r to the absolute value of m, and then e to the i m theta, right? So when m is positive, what are we going to choose? When m is positive over here, we're going to choose the positive absolute value. When m is negative, we're going to choose the negative to make it work out properly. And so this is the solution of our problem. Of course, what do we know over here? So what do I have to choose for these a m coefficients over here? So let's plug in r equals 1. So in other words, phi of theta has to be the sum m and z of what, when r is equal to 1, alpha m e to the i m theta. And of course, those alpha m should be the Fourier coefficients of, of phi, right? So alpha m, therefore, has to be phi hat of m, which is 1 over 2 pi, integral from negative pi to pi of phi of theta, e to the minus i m theta d theta. Right? Those are the Fourier coefficients. So those are just the Fourier coefficients of phi. Okay, and so therefore we can uh, simplify our solution over here. So in other words, what's the solution? Our function, our solution u of r theta, u of r and theta, is just the sum over m and z of what? Of phi, these functions phi hat of m, these coefficients phi hat of m, r to the absolute value of m, e to the i m theta is the solution of our um, is the solution of our Laplace equation with the Dirichlet boundary with the with the the Dirichlet problem on the uh, the Dirichlet problem on the disk with these with these with that boundary condition over here? And of course, we can see what this really is. This is exactly just the function phi involved with the Poisson kernel. So this is the Poisson kernel convolution phi evaluated at theta. So that's the solution to our Laplace equation on the unit disk with a given boundary condition. Thank you very much.